Oi. I did a lot last week. Things have calmed down a bit, but I also noticed that I'm still wearing my shirt, my level 60 stuff. Oh, come on. Oh, geez. Wait, what do I do at the start of, <laughs> start of my session? I report spam bots. Oh my gosh, just like three of them? Jeez. Like, it, it is literally the same thing over and over again. Support. They have malicious links and bot accounts. This is a bot account. Uh, here's what they put in chat. Well, if anything, I'm going to be well practiced in, in this. Kind of wish there was. <laughs> I kind of wish I had mods. Man. Man. I think there's supposed to be like some sort of. Auto mod moderation. All right, this should help. I'm gonna block hyperlinks. Okay, I, I, I think I've, I think I figured it out. Now, if only I had a, a consistent schedule that I could maybe had get somebody to mod the chat, even though I don't have much of a chat, but hey, we can't all win. I'm going to do a quick uh, purchase here because I am still wearing my, uh, I'm essentially still wearing my Shire stuff for my my accessories, and well, so the tip when you get to sixty or seventy, um, start with just filling out the left side of your character with with scavian gear uh, using poetics. Because some of the quests that we have coming up <clears throat> give coffers, which basically gives you stuff for the, the your your accessories. So it's a priority system. 
fortunately have enough poetics to basically basically fully give me up. The only difference is my Memphina's earring, which <laughs> is scaled to my level. So I'm essentially, I'm essentially, I mean, at this time, I'm essentially adding level 400, but uh, the Memphina's earring, because of wonkiness, it gives me a slightly lower score. So yeah, it's giving Joker, it's giving Bracelet, and two giving Rings of Slain. So. Oh, I am 400. Never mind. I just needed to save that set in order to get it. Uh, I just need uh, two more, two and a partial more sets of Gibeon to, to fully out. But hopefully during this time, while I'm not actually farming for Poetics, to purchase said Scavian trinkets, uh, I will get some coffers that I can use to put in there, so... He seems troubled. Come to see how we're getting on. Oh, Vio. Yeah. We've made good progress since we took back Alamigo, but there's one big issue we still have to address leadership. The Domans had Lord Hien ready and willing to take the throne, but we've got no one like that here. Theodoric was our last ruler, and he wasn't called the Mad King for nothing. <sighs> Suffice it to say, our people have had their fill of kings, which means we need to find a new way forward. If only it were that easy. Everyone and his uncle has an opinion. For the time being, we're just going to have to keep leaning on General Aldin and the Alliance for support, and see if we can't find a solution together. Something tells me we're going to be hosting a lot of meetings in the near future. But if that's what it takes, I'm ready to talk till my jaw aches. The reach is yours, Nago. Don't do anything I wouldn't. Aye, aye, Commander. Ah, there you are. I've been searching all over for you. Iron Ball. Don't worry, it's nothing bad. That said, this might not be the best place to talk. Will you join me? I'll get to the point. Might you be interested in a spot of adventure? Does, After all, does he need to really we were ask? adventurous before we were scions, were we not? After routing the Imperials and liberating El Amigo, I reckon we've earned a bit of respite, don't you? And what better way to spend it than by returning to our roots? So, what say you? Shall we call on Alphino and go adventuring? It's my arm, I don't. I like how, how th that expression definitely says I was saying that sarcastic. Which is exactly what has to go. Arm. A lot of rushing water. Right then. Let's go for Master Libya. Actually, leave that to me. I want you to you fresh on our little venture. Wait for us on, by the eighth right. Night right, will be along shortly. See you there. Trying to get that accent down. It's Alamegan, because Arnvald is Alamegan. I like Ar Arnvald. 
I don't know why. I just do. Uh, we do know that he has the Echo. Nowhere is near as powerful as I am, but he does have the Echo as well. So. I guess we'll wait for him here. Don't think this part is VR'd. I'll have my mouse over there just in case. Nope. Greetings, let's go. It would seem you are to accompany are involved in some manner of escapade. Have you any idea what we've gotten ourselves into? Allow me to explain. It'll be something of a history lesson, or I'll try to be brief. No snoring, if you please. Now, the events I would speak of occurred during the occupation, back when Alamigo was still the monarchy and Theodric was sat on the throne. A uniquely brutal despot, by all accounts. Uh, it was. King of Verunix suffered no rivals, real or imagined, and his dispute with the monks of the Fist ended with Rago's reach being burned to the ground. In the later years of his rule, he was seized by this unshakable belief that unseen forces were conspiring to steal his crown, so he ordered that every soul with a claim to the throne be executed, including his own family. The wealth of the poor sods he put to death became the property of the king, and it's said that these royal treasures were hoarded somewhere in the palace. Thus was born the legend of the Mad King's Trove. Ah, I believe I see the direction our adventure is to take. I assume you have a mind to unearth this hidden bounty? You assume correctly. And would I also be correct in assuming that this legend is widely known? Others might surely have gone and searched for your prize, tempting as it seems. Well, of course, you won't be the first to make the attempt. Following El Amigo's liberation, more than few eager soldiers turned the palace upside down in hopes of claiming an easy fortune. But even after scouring every room from dusk till dawn, they just uncovered not a single coin. The gold left strained away as quickly as it had come. The legend of the Mad King's Trove remains main simply that, a legend. Uh, but I see you have no intention of letting the story end there. What self-respecting adventurer would? Imagine, the three of us delving into the decades-old mystery. Tell me the thought that doesn't set your heart racing. Yep, you can count on me. Yeah! Fox. Please learn the emote box. I have, on my off time, uh, acquired a couple other emotes. I don't know. I kind of, it's one of those you get the emote, but there doesn't seem to be like any like actual like connection to it. Back to Alpha now. See, these are the coffers I was referring to. The news of Doma and Alamigo's liberations kindled the flames of revolution in every corner of the empire. I hear the imperial province of Dalmasca has already risen up in rebellion. What mean, which means the guardians must surely have their hands full, which what better time than now to indulge in such a diversion? Tell us, involved. have we any clues as to where we might begin our search? Well, judging by how the other treasure hunters fared, nosing around the palace isn't like to get us anywhere, so we'll probably need to, uh... Let's go round. Would that be another way of saying no? Oh. <laughs> yes. I see. In that case, I shall pay a visit to the Allied Archivists and request access to the records seized from the Imperials. 
The Guardians are meticulous about such things. If they uncovered the trove during their occupation, the event is certain to have been recorded. In the meantime, the two of you can track down those who've worked at as pound servants and officials in Theodric's day. Given that they would that they would have been at least twenty at the at the time, you will be looking for people who are around forty summers or more. Uh, anything they can tell you about the king and his bloody deeds may prove useful. So be sure to listen well. On Vald, pray try to try your luck in the fringes and and the peaks. Whilst Essegos takes the rounds in the Alamegan quarter. Ha! And I was thinking I was the party leader. Not that in mind, of course. Let's be at, about it, eh? We can meet afterwards at Gilbard's Gate. Alamegan Quarter. Yeah, make sure I have food. Right. Ooh. I'll quickly grab this chocobo keep. I don't end up using them very often, but I do. There are times when I do end up. Uh, Using them, so it's good to have them. In the palace? No, not me, lad. Surely you've heard stories of the Mad King. He's used to hold public executions up on the Devon audi audience. Anyone, and I mean anyone, suspected of conspiring against the crown was flung from the top of those steps. Suffice it to say that I stayed as far away from the palace as possible. I probably could just fly around here, but this seems more RP. You want to hear an old man's story, do you? I, well, most of it, of what I know of the Mad King is common knowledge. We'd only see see his own, his royal majesty when he's deigned to attend the executions he's ordered. After a while, even after his enemies died, died wasn't enough to coax him out of hiding. They say he started seeing assassins in a rich chateau and wouldn't set foot outside the palace walls. I was work oh, I was offered work there as a royal servant once, but the mere thought of it left me in a cold sweat. Ask it around town. Here's a retired row. Let's... For a second there, I thought he was shirtless, but he's not. Kind of disappointed. I think he has my haircut, too. Anyways, beside the point. I, I served in the pleasure of King Theodric and lived to tell the tale. When the palace guards I was, truly, truth be told, there was a dark chapter in my life and one I'd sooner forget. Hardly a night went by when we didn't hear blood curdling screams echoing from the inner chambers, which of course we are under orders to ignore. So we'd stand still as statue, trying not to imagine what horrors were being unfolded within. <sighs> if you're hell's bent on finding out what happened in the palace, head down the street here and ask old er Arnold. He was the king's head scribe. Arnold. Yes, I'm on. I'm Arnold. What do you want from me? Hmm. You would have me dredge up some decidedly unsavory memories? Yet, if Alamigo is to move forward, we must acknowledge the misdeeds of the past. Very well. I shall tend to you what I remember. I take it you know of Theodric's paranoia and the public execution of his kinsmen? Those were horrible enough, but in his days, the king's fevered mind settled upon an even grisier method of disposal, which only a chosen few were unfortunate enough to witness. His majesty ordered the court thaumaturge to unleash a vile curse upon the remaining members of the royal family, a magic which transformed them into fiends of hideous aspect. The resulting monstrosities were then cast into the darkness below the palace. 
Even now, my sleep is troubled by night nightmares. If others of Theodric's blood were prone to share his madness, then mayhap it is a kindness that the monarch ended with him. Okay, now, now let's fly. Uh, since you're all here, why don't you share what you've learned? Allow me to begin then. As promised, I scoured the Imperial records for my for any mention of fantastic treasures and found precisely none. It is just possible, I suppose, that a corrupt official deliberately hid the fact that the Rose discovery, hoping to enrich himself, but I find it rather unlikely that so valuable a find would stay secret for long. I conclude that our prize either does not exist or that the Imperials somehow overlooked it. But what of you, Essigos? Were your investigations any more fruitful? Turned into monsters? What do you mean by this darkness beneath the palace, I wonder? I met an old man in... Al I met an old man in Alagiri who spoke of a palace of subterranean prison and he ought he said, not for curse of cursed abominations. The Imperial Archives are also silent about the subject of fiends inside the palace grounds. Good that the scribe fellow had been spinning himself him a yarn, do you think? Do you believe him, Eskos? Here seem genuine. If he's afraid, then it must like uh, that does does link credence to the tale. Though I'm not sure how how that helps us in our search. Do not be so hasty. An old anecdote may very well have told us where the trove is hidden, but ere I share my theory, there's a matter I would clarify. Ironvold, you spoke of light-hearted adventure, but I sense a deeper motive in this expedition. Why are you so intent on finding this treasure? It wasn't all pretense, I swear. But you're right. My father was in the Imperial Army, a man of Garlean blood. I trust you know what it means what I mean when I say that my Armegan mother did not welcome my arrival. As I grew, she would check my brow over and over, convinced that a spot on my skin was an emerging third eye, like the kind you see in pure blood guardians. My mother did not care for the stunt for this taunting reminder of her, my heritage, and took up a knife. War paint serves to cover the cover the scar. In the end, she turned me out on the street, and I was left to haunt the alleyways of Alamigo, a feral child who got what he needed through begging, cunning, or us. The best I can say about the years that followed is that I survived. But I hated the animal I'd become. Eventually, I left the city behind me and joined a group of re refugees bound for the other side of the wall. It was then that I turned to adventuring. That road led me to the company of the Scions. I tell you this so that you understand. I know all too well poverty and hunger can do to a person. I drew steel on ordinary folk for a measly crust of bread. With the Eric's gold, I could spare my countrymen the shame of living like that. Thank you, Arnvald, and I apologize that cannot be pleasant to recall, but I felt it best to be clear on our intentions. Well, Essicus, are you content to surrender the treasure to Arnvald's noble cause and claim the thrill of adventure as your reward? As a ghost, would think about that for a moment. But then be like, eh, I get punched people in the face, so I think I'll I think I'll be good. Then I should be glad to tell you my theory of the resting place of the Mad King's Trove. You're minded to hear it. 
Uh, let's go with the fending coffer. And port and open coffer. Up over. Okay. No, puppy, return. I need to get rid of this. This is what I wanted. Okay. Now that I got that. A netless bracelet and a ring of fending. Shit. Only another ring. There's still three seventy, so getting the getting the uh uh, uh scavian rings and everything will still help. Anyways, back to monk. Alfredo seems eager to share his theory. Actually, mayhap it would be better if we first adjourn to a more suitable location. In case a rival treasure hunter overhears our uh, in case a rival tre treasure hunter overhears our plan, you mean? Good thinking. That was not exactly the reason, but tis certainly without concern. Let us reconvene on the southern edge of Lock Sled. Seld. Lock Seld. Oh, wait. There we are. I need a little munchies, and I just got myself some goldfish. All right. I don't want to crunch in your ear. Forgive me, it was not my intention to draw up proceedings. I simply wish to have the lock in sight while I explain things. Prior to the great flood of the six honorable calamity, the salt lakes you see before you were yet dry, dry ravines. And this, believe it or not, was the site of the ancient city of Scala, which rose and fell during the 5th Astral era. era. From what I know of the period, the city is, uh, was already deserted by the time the waters began to rise, having been all but destroyed by war. Yet this, yet its ruins remain this day at the bottom of Loch Sled. The Seld. Seld. I keep calling it Sled. It is my belief that the darkness belief the palace, mentioned by Theodric's former scribe, was not a reference to a prison, but a place still further below, the ruins of Scala. I further surmise that the 
Oh, excuse me. No, I, he moved and was starting to go into thinking position, so I thought it changed and didn't actually read who was talking. I further surmised that the Mad King's unfortunate kinsmen were cast down there not simply out of a desire to punish them, but to discourage ex exploration. The Odric wants to, wanted to keep the ruins secure. Wait, you're saying they were meant to guard the king, Mad King's trove? Precisely. And since we know the court thaumaturge was involved, we can safely assume that any entrance to the old city would have been magically concealed. Which would explain how a legion of imperial soldiers and the gods knows how many Alamegans never found a trace of the trove. We, however, have certain advantages which they did not enjoy. Esagos, would you be so good to swim down to the bottom of the lock and search for an underwater route into the ruins? While you do that, Arnvald and I will seek out an ensorcelled portal within the palace. Sure, leave me alone to do it. Jeez. I'll just I'll just try to 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 find a place underneath. No, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Get the soldier. The water. So let's use a plesiosaur. Destinations. You discover a passage that lead under the palace foundations. Press on and find out where it goes. Well, no, because we were there. Stone no door. Come to a worn stone door standing temptingly ajar. It would appear you have found an entrance to the subterranean ruins. As it goes to Salfano, we have searched the prison beneath the palace and found a door con concealed by enchantments. Have you ought to report? You believe you found it? You believe it? And you believe it leads into the ruins? I'm assuming. Yeah, I found a stone door down here which might lead into the ruins. You believe it leads into the ruins? Excellent. Then I propose we, we proceed with the respective entry points and look to meet somewhere in the middle. Ah, oh, come on, lads. We might as well make it a race. Victory goes to the first adventurer to find the treasure. Godspeed. Needless to say, I love all your ball. Around the city to Scala. Let's see how. Uh, six minutes. That's not bad. Gonna, I'm trying to, to, you know, stick to one class when getting to max level. So it's just these role quests. I <laughs> I need my Gunbreaker, Astrologian, and Red Mage. Fortunately, while trying to make sure that I get, get all the Scavian gear, I needed to far, farm out Poetics. And what happens along the way i get everybody to at least 71 <laughs> which is which is high enough to to, to at least um uh, which is uh high enough to at least to get into the uh first dungeon because all every expansion the leveling dungeons always start at like 61 51 Although the first one was was uh, fifteen, but that was also because he started at level one. So,
Monk, a machinist, a scholar, and a gun breaker. This is nice. The uh, DPS or Lala's. I really want to like, at, like sometime have a all Lala group just because I think it would be cool. Like the only thing is, I don't think the races that I like to play are highly popular. Like Makote and here maybe, but. And uh, actually, I think the aura is actually pretty. <laughs> this this Lala machine is just like just moving nonstop. <laughs> I find humor in this. Kind of excited for that flamethrower. <laughs> so the tank the tank asked uh if uh if prefer smaller pill poles or bigger poles he says says whatever whatever you feel feel like And and then supplemented it up. If you die, you pull too much. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. Oh, this is uh, beyond the other side of the room. There you are. Okay, got it. I, I I've only done this this one a couple of times. Maybe only once? I don't know. Like it doesn't necessarily come up on roulettes. I don't remember what I need to do with this. Okay. So 
So stay far away to avoid the uh, water resistance down. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad. I, I'm scabby geared out, so. No. Oh. Well, we said something.
Oh, we don't need that. Earrings, I don't need. <clears throat> Clear the coffer. Not maiming, not aiming, so. Yes, we uh, turn into these floaty things so we can cross the gap. Or we kill another floaty thing. I just had a little bit of lag there. Hey, guess what? We're at the last boss. I if I can remember how this works. We'll, we'll, we'll relearn together. Oh, machinist, thank you for the crits.
I'm confused. Yeah. Oh shit. Um Okay, cool. It's it's one of those things where you kinda of have to like make sure that nobody's in your little thing. Oh shit. Just as I pop my cooldowns. No! Uh, I'm going to, to just like finish him off. One percent limit break. Oh, they didn't wait for me, and they gave me something that I, I don't have a class nearly for. I think this is VO'd. I want to say. Yay, leg, and while waiting, I'm munching on my goldfish. Are you all right? Aye. Aye. Everything's still attached. Ah. It seems both our paths led here. Very good. I was like, 
What took you guys so long? We spent altogether too much time fleeing fiends horrid and numerous. How fared you? Wait. You fled from them? Why didn't you just kill them? Much the same, then. It would appear this place is yet inhabited by King Theodoric's kin, or what is left of them. The work of terrible magics, I fear. Terrible, aye. But their misfortune is our... fortune? Quite. By the Twelve, there is even more than I imagined. That hair. Oh, I can't wait to see the look on Lisa's face. Thanks for believing in me, you two. Hey, Lisa and I are monk siblings. I would say say monk siblings or monk bros, but she's not really. Well, she's not bro. She would be sis. So, it, it, and then I would be bro. So it would be uh, uh, monk siblings. Turn it down now. Um, Holm, Val, and I have forged ahead at the fastest pace we could imagine, but I was not surprised to find you waiting for us. I suppose it serves us right for challenging the warrior of light. Next time, we should agree on some manner of handicap. Ah, we may have lost Alphino, but think of what we found. Quite. And still reeling from the sight of the mountain of Richards. What? Like how you reeled at the sight of the floating spectre, you mean? <laughs> you should have heard him scream as it goes. Well, must we dwell on such momentary lapses? We found the Mad King's Trove, and that's all that matters. Uh, I should probably like try turning these quests uh, on one of my 71s to see, because that was, what, 46,000 experience points. Not much. Uh, maybe maybe see if I could, could boost my other classes, but still just like run the normal stuff on, on Monk. Just give him a, give him a, give him a little boost. Maximize the, deep, the, the uh, uh, XP. All justine aside, all justine aside, we must take uh, tell people the good news. I think least would be the first. Should be the first. Seconded, there will be a meeting of representatives from across Alamigo, so she is sure to be in the city. Shall we seek her out? I. I think he has kind of Scottish access, accent, and that's how I'm doing it. I will admit, I'm. I haven't gone through any uh, uh, dialect training. Uh, I will admit that. So take my accents as not based off of real <laughs> accents, just taking bits and pieces from everywhere I can, can think of and me trying uh, my hardest to, which doesn't really necessarily mean it's going to be good so I will, and they're not scottish he's he's alamegan oh you three look pleased with yourselves what have you been up to I'm glad you asked, Lise. I'm pretty sure you're going to like the answer. And tell us about our, our little adventure. You're joking. The Mad King's Trove? I thought it was myth. 
So it did plenty of people. But they didn't have Essegos and Alpha No in their party. The credit for finding it should really go to them. As for what to do with the, all of it, I vote it go towards alleviating, alleviating the suffering of Al Alamigo's poor. Well, there's much as you say. Arnvald did not exaggerate, I assure you. We could not hope to carry even a fraction of it out of our, our own. I have taken the liberty of sketching out a rough map of the ruins. If you will assemble a squad of your most trusted freedom fighters, they should be able to follow the route, route to where the treasure lies. Understood. I'll make sure every coin is accounted for, and that goes, and that goes for the spending of it as well. Thank you. Oh, there's one other thing. When the time comes to draw up a plan for distributing the spoils, I would ask that you consult Alphano. I don't have a head for details. I'm not educated. I see that that simply handing out sacks of gill won't solve everything, but I couldn't rightly tell you what to do instead. Oh, I know the feeling. I welcome any advice you can give us, Alphano. Of course, I shall be at your disposal. Commander, we got a problem. Deep breaths. Tell me what's happened. The mobs gathered outside headquarters, and they're starting to make demands. You best, you best come and see for yourself. Oh, Theon. Like hells we will! We know who you've got in there! And with mud and drink, moving on to the next. I got a monster yab! I'm gonna have one of these in a while, I love these! They sound Scottish, right? Bring her out! Bring her out! What's going on? Someone let slip about Fedora. It's true, then. The bitch really is in there. I knew it. I bloody knew it. We demand vengeance! Bring her out! Today we butcher the butcher! Butcher the... Come on, you don't mean that! We'd be no better than the Imperials if you'd all just calm down! Calm down! That monster and her thrice damned skulls dragged my man from our home and beat him to death in the street! Aye, and my dad! That bitch has spilt enough blood to fill a lock! We all know her crimes. She's a traitor and a murderer. How many of your resistance friends have died at her hands, eh? And here you are, protecting her! So that's what all the fuss is about. Hearken to me, brothers and sisters of Alamigo! Hey, who's this? That... That's the bull of Alamigo. My friends, you are not alone in your anger, your grief, your despair, for it is mine as well. That gnawing pain in your breast, it is enough to bring an old bull to his knees. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, to think not only of the family and friends who were cut down before your very eyes, but to think also of the ones who were abducted, the ones who may yet live. Where were they taken? What became of them? These questions demand answers. I share your thirst for justice, for vengeance, but we will gain only fleeting satisfaction if we give in to our base appetites. We will never know the truth. Now is the time that we, the people of Alamigo, must decide what manner of nation we will build for ourselves and for generations yet unborn. 
When they look to our example, will they see a people who held fast to their principles? Or one who cast them aside when tried? I say to you, it is our responsibility to give these prisoners a fair trial that they might answer to all of Alamigo. The Galleons called us savages, and I'll be damned if we prove them right. I know you're right, I do, but I can't. Rabbi. Such a good speaker. I think it's probably because of his time of first, like, getting into the gladiatorial pits and trying to rouse up the crowd and have everybody cheer for him and everything during that. And then he got all of his money and became part of the syndicate, essentially became the, the personal like, confidant and friend of uh, the Sultana of Ulda. And in that time, then he became leader of the Immortal Flames, uh, the, the Old Oz Grand Company. And then he has to be able to, to rouse up his troops, so he has to be able to speak. And that experience, when these times, it's like he, need, he finds that connection with people. Uh, why am I with Gritania? Because um, why am I with the Twin Adder? Well, mainly because, um, well, we're, uh, we're, my FC, uh, Grizzly Falls is, uh, the allied with Twin Adder. And I'm like, from my understanding, there's like bumps and boosts that we get from being in the grand company of the one where the, uh, uh, um, the uh in the yeah in the grand company of that is allied with the free company so that's 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 why why really the only mechanically speaking not necessary right now after that it's like uh i'm switching to the immortal flames <laughs> my thanks Ravon. Just seeing to their anger, I could feel myself being swept away. It is a difficult side to stem. It was that same rage that brought us to our feet and carried us to victory. But now the war is over. All the unspent fury is being channeled into vengeance. Aye, and it's not just here. We've reports of mobs forming all over. They've been targeting folk known to be cooperating with the Guardians. It starts with insults most often, then someone picks up a stone. Some industrious souls even sought to seek out the graves of Xenos and his officers. Grim. I want to build a country where everyone, regardless of race or origin, can live side by side in peace. And maybe the time isn't right. Maybe people just aren't ready. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. The representatives will be here soon. I'll be damned if I'm going to give up before I even begin. Who are the representatives exactly? Oh, village elders, refugee leaders, and the like. It wouldn't be right for us to di dictate the nature's future on our own if we planned to. So we planned a summit of sorts. I've also invited the Anun Ananta and the Kikirin to participate. Alamigo stands at a crossroads, and this meeting will decide which path it takes. The matter of Adola's sentence can't be suffered to disrupt proceedings. Let's execute her and be done with it. 
She herself asked to be put to death. Nago, I already explained why we wouldn't do that. Sending her to the gallows would satisfy people right now, but where would it end? Should we round up everybody who collaborated and everybody who didn't resist? This, there'd be no one left. There'd be no better, we'd be no better than Theodric and Xenos. Begging pardon, but might I be allowed to speak to Fordol? Uh, only I caught a glimpse of her past, a moment of it anyway, during the fight. She's done terrible things, I unforgiving things. But in some ways, she's a victim of the circumstances in which she was born. And there's something I, and that's something I can understand. All right, speak with the prison guard, and you'll be ready. And I'll come and join you. I want to talk to her too. I'll return to my other duties then. We are. We begin, barely begun to investigate the facility where they gave Fortola her powers. We'd be fa fairly warned, friends. She will test you. Don't let your emotions color you, your judgment when she does. Does. Oh, the commander's permission to enter then. Then? I think this is the ode. I think. Give me time to munch more stuff and I'll mute myself. <laughs> So many visitors. Come to have a good laugh, have you? Or do you mean to put me out of my misery? To finish what you started? It's about bloody time. That's not why we're here, no. Do you remember what I said? How I promised you you'd live long enough to see us win our freedom? Well, I meant it. And not to mock you, either. You're wasting your time. All of this is pointless! There's no reason to keep me alive, and you know it! I killed your men. I killed my men! And you know what my only regret is? That I didn't kill you when I had the chance! That's a lie, and you know it! You think we can't tell what you're trying to do? That we're blind? Yeah, you're a fool, but you're not stupid. You're ruthless. Relentless. You'd give up anything and everything to get what you want. You didn't come this far, climbing over the bodies of your own brothers and sisters just to piss it all away! I see you, Fedora. I see you for what you are. Fadola, we mustn't be late. The Imperial Viceroy will be attending today's banquet. All right! Father, what's Lord Gaius like? Is he nice? Are you friends? There you go again with all your questions. 
Lord Gaius is a great and honourable man who looks after all of Alamigo. He's very busy, and if we don't hurry, we'll miss our chance to see him. Filthy tinhead lovers. The little tin head lover doesn't know what she is, eh? A traitor, sweetheart. A backstabbing bitch who gladly betray her kith and kin to gnaw on what few scraps the Imperials deign to toss her. Like your bastard father and whore mother. That's not true! My parents are good people! They've never done anything like that! Oh, but they were quick to help themselves and their bitch spawn, weren't they? You're just as guilty as them! Fadola! Traitors! Soldiers of the Imperial Army are under no obligation to intervene in the disputes of arm. We're citizens! We have rights! Ah! I'm scared! It's all right. It's all right. They don't understand, but they'll see in time. They'll see that this is the only way to survive. Savages have their fun. They'll be more compliant once they've tied themselves out. Fadola, please! You already have citizenship! Why would you want to become a soldier? Oh, gods! What have you done to your face? Forgotten it already, have you? I'm honouring Father's memory. Telling the world that you know better than a common savage. Am I though, Mother? Are any of us? Can't you see? Citizenship means nothing to them. If you're not a pure blood Galleon, you're no different from any other savage. So I'll play the part. I'll join the Legion and I'll make them respect me. And when the mob see that, they'll think twice before throwing their stones. And 
Alsfrid, Rudolf, Emlyn. It's time. It'll be hard. Humiliating. They'll try to break us. Send us crawling back to our own kind. But we won't, no matter what. We'll bleed for them, die for them if we have to. We'll do whatever it takes to be free! So, you mean to play the part one last time, eh? The unrepentant traitor whose death will serve to unite the people? Shut up. You had every chance to kill yourself. Fashion a noose from your clothes. Wait for the guards to leave you alone long enough to slip it over your neck. I said shut up! Oh, but then it would have all been for nothing, wouldn't it? Whatever it takes. That's what you said. Been in my head, have you? Had a little peek at my past. And what? A few stolen memories tell you everything you need to know, do they? Don't you dare patronize me! You don't know a goddamned thing about the life I've led! The bastards that killed him. The bastards that let it happen. My father deserved better! I swore I'd do whatever it took to make them pay! for anyone. The things they've done to you, the lies, the betrayal, the endless fighting. Yet there you stand, unbroken. How? But what's very Essigos like? You know why, you saw. For those I have lost, for those I have yet to save, or because I choose to. Essigos, the overly macho little Lollafell, <coughs> who, uh, if you even try to joke about the fact that he's so short, and small, he will punch you in the face. I'm going to say, because I choose to. I think that's appropriate for us again. Damn you. Damn you all. You still have time, Fordola. Think about how you want to spend it. Let's go.
It ended during the cutscene. It's <laughs> just switched to jobs before before I did that, so I could check to see if at 71 it still gives me 47k or 46k. If it did, I would definitely just stick with mom. But maybe this one. I don't know what we, what we saw. I don't know that we solved anything exactly, but we've given Fortuna something to at least think about. Turn down. There we are. I uh, found something new to think about, too. I don't know about you, Eskos, but the visions only come to me every now and then. From the way Fodoro kept wincing, though, I get the feeling she's having them almost all the time. A lot of bad memories to deal with. Hmm. I wonder. Could this be some fundamental difference between one who's born with Echo and one who's artificial and imbued with it? Well, the immortal flames have been scouring the research facility ever since the liberation. There's a chance they might have some answers for us. General Aldean there is there overseeing the investigation. Let's go and pay him a visit, shall we? Uh, just because I'm going to gunbreaker this. Oh, actually, let me let me take a look at this. Who's... Yeah, let's kind of break her. I wanted to have at least some like damage dealing focus. Light. I got some tall buildings here. For the Resonatorium. What news? You spoke with Fedola, I take it? Yes, as expected, she didn't say much, but it wasn't a total waste of time. Arnvald noticed something odd about her. She thinks she might be having visions almost constantly, which is not how the Echo normally works. Have you found anything here which might explain why it's so different for her? Hmm. Been hard pressed trying to organize the research materials, uh, let alone study them. To be frank, I'd welcome the science expert assistance if we have time to lend a hand. Actually, this might not have combat, so I think I might take one of my astrology. Because I think, yeah, astrology is just a little bit behind Gunbreaker. Now, when I get into the next expansion, the the, the Shadowbreaker storyline, I'm going to do the, the focus, and then I'll probably just grind up the others through dungeons and roulettes and such. Actually, just through dungeons. I don't think I'm going to be doing roulettes because at that point in time, I won't really have anything to use poetics on. Once I get the scavian gear, I'm basically done. So I'll probably just just dungeon them um, to kind of keep them in line with monk, keeping monk ahead for armory bonus. The vice in which Kryl was held seems uh, even more ominous now you know its purpose. The surrounding pods are, are marked Supply Subject, while this one bears this simple, uh, the label of Master Subject. The Ironworks received a request from the Alliance to analyze these devices. I've been recording everything of interest. Did you notice the labeling? All the pods are designed to drain the ether of the occupant, save that one right here, right there. Unlike the others, the interior seems fitted with an array of sensors to measure etheric waveforms. To what purpose, however, I couldn't tell you. Idle conversation prohibited. Eating and drinking prohibited. On scrap of paper appears to list facility regulation, but nothing of any interest. Okay. Talk to the flame investigator. It's 
So many bodies, every one of them a victim of these experiments. Do you show any signs of external injury that we could be able to determine they perish from forcible ether extractions? Uh, such a miserable way to die. I know little or less of science, so any light you could shed on the facility's operations would be much appreciated, Eskos. Shall we start with you? Explain everything that I ran into. Wasn't much. Hmm. Taken in combination with the testimonies of Kral and Thancred, I do believe I see exactly what the Imperials are attempting here. The enhanced proceed. Enhancement procedure involves infusing a single candidate with ether siphon from multiple supply subjects. For, as for the, ma the master subject, in this case Kryle, the pattern of her etheric activity would pr provide the model of which they would artificially engineer the candidate's order. In other words, they were trying to recreate Kryle's echo. Echo? Question mark? I believe so, which would explain our prisoner's present state. Kral is possessed with an unrivaled ability to hear the whispers of the soul. It seems probable that the procedure endangered the same, engendered the same acute sensitivity in the Fordola. The soldiers who guard Fordola, many of them lost friends and family in the, to the skulls. And there's a sentry at a door night and day. If she can't help sensing their thoughts and seeing their past... And you, and you don't just, but you don't just see their past. You live it, all the emotions, all the pain. Imagine what it'd do to you. You'd never see, be the same again. Indeed, as I recall, Yuzel was completely transformed by a single glimpse of Grace Falgo's past. But Dola has been forced to experience the agony of those who lives she destroyed. The guilt must be unbearable. That explains her request to be executed. Sounds to me like a kind of justice. Regardless, she can suffer on for now. We have more pressing matters to consider. If the results of these experiments have been relayed back to Garlemald, there would be not to stop the Empire from repeating the trick. They could give the echo to anyone, to an entire legion. We must be ready. We must learn all we can for these godforsaken procedures, and for Dola remains our best source of information. She'll not be getting her wish. Not yet. Right. Keep faith, Les. If we keep faith, Les. If we are to convince others to follow you, you must believe that you're telling what they're you're telling them. People will respond to passion, not if it's feigned. I understand. Thank you, General. We should leave the flames to it. Let's go. Yeah. Well, orchestration roll. Orchestration. I don't know how to pronounce that. I go looking for answers about the Echo and end up getting schooled by Rauvon. Yet more evidence that I don't know yet more evidence that I don't know what I'm doing. It's no wonder people listen to him and not me. General Alden is a veteran of countless campaigns, Lise. You cannot compare yourself to a commander of his experience. <clears throat> I know, and I also know that I couldn't have convinced that mob to give up to go home. It makes me realize how much we rely on his authority and how much I still have to learn. I wonder what he'll do when everything is settled. I mean, it's his homeland. After going to the trouble of winning it back, might he not want to stay? It's a quandary which countless refugees now face. To continue the life they built in Nulda, will start again in the land of their birth.
Uh, Essigos, honey. Remember, I, I've, I've shipped Essigos and Pippin. I, I'm newly returned from Ulda and a message, with a message from the Sultana. Her Grace desires an audience with you. She understands that you have re responsibilities here, but asks that you visit the palace at your earliest convenience. Well, I must away and tend to other business. Until next time, my friends. My husband. There's a kiss in there. They don't show it because you can't really actually uh, romance any of these characters. <laughs> Mechanically speaking. Head can canonically, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Audience with the Sultana. Depending on the nature of a consultation, it might be the perfect opportunity to inquire about the general's future plans. Yes, we all like to know about those, Alphano, but not everyone has a comfortable, is as comfortable integrating royalty as. Take no notice of him, I guess. Yep, still 46,000. A teeny boost for for that, so I'm just going to stick with and bunk from now on. <laughs> Speaking of which, I need to get my monk set updated and so that you can uh, transmog into it. Well, the question how to put the Magic King's treasures good use, good use shows no sign of answering itself. I'll be to it to our involved. I am you know, beck and call. And I should be getting back to our own tasks. I organize, I'll organize a squad to head down into the ruins and then start preparing for a big meeting. Oh, send, send nom, nom, nomino, nomino my regards, I suppose. And, and us too, if you please. We shall see you on your return. On your return. Hold on a second. Let me uh, do a little uh, screen clean up here. I have a bunch of side stuff to do, but this stream is about the MSQ. It's not about the side stuff. I need to turn it up. Barely hear everything, but I suppose not much is going on. But off to Alda. Amber rule. And speak to Bartholomew. You think this is VO'd? Don't expect it, my lord. Please proceed. Calls us Lord. That's funny. I thank you for answering my summons in these most interesting times. You have been busy. The liberation of Alamigo will have far-reaching consequences, and there is a matter upon which I would seek your counsel. I speak of Rauban and his future. know the tale of his rise from penniless refugee to member of the Syndicate and General of the Immortal Flames. Yet though he has come to call Uldar home, it will never be his homeland. He is a son of Alamigo. And now that she is free, I thought it only a matter of time before he sought my leave to return to her. Indeed, I had resigned myself to his loss. Suffice it to say, 
I was greatly surprised to hear him speak so lightly of handing over the reins in Alamigo and retaking his place at my side. I mean, he's, he's developed a great friendship with you. I mean, I would almost ship the two just because of how close, but they, I suppose they're really more like brother sisters sort of thing. Close siblings. But, yeah. I will welcome him with open arms, of course. He is my most trusted advisor and my dearest friend. But I have known the man a long time, and beneath that steely gaze, I spied a flicker of doubt. Whether Raubon chooses to remain in Uldar or return to Alamigo, I only wish that he do so with a heart unburdened by guilt or regret. Yet, how can he freely make such a choice, knowing how much I depend on him? It is past time that I learn to discharge my duties as a Sultana alone. I must go forth and see my realm with my own eyes, and hear the wind with my own ears. Might I have your company for a brief adventure? Wonderful! Allow me a moment to change into something a touch less conspicuous, and I will join you outside. I don't need that. I just need me uh, an Aetherite shard. I will continuously call them Aetherites and 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 Aethernets because there's an A in it. You say uh, we say hub because there's a fucking itch in it. <laughs> to, to quote any Izzard. So since we're going to the quicksand, I can uh, stop by an in-room and see about that. There, there she is. Uh, I'll be right back. I got one more. I'm, I'm going to change myself. Don't get me wrong. I So the scavian gear is actually red in color. And actually, the, the, the headpiece here is, um, is, is more just like a silver mechanical thing. Uh, I kind of like it because it still shows your face, but still looks like you have something on your head. It's very sci-fi. Which, I mean, Final Fantasy has got kind of this mixture of, of magic and sci-fi, so... Um, do it. This guy's my, uh, Sam, uh, trainer. <sighs> We're gonna pop by an in-room here. But let's let's look more monk. So we're gonna dress her. Oh, do I already have it? Do you... oh update this. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and use this. Uh, no, nope, that's what I want. Hold on. I could need to add. Or changes, okay. Uh, oh. Hold on. Yeah. Me and quickly. The things you have to do to look good. Mm. Here. Repair all. And repair all. Repair all. Repair all. Repair all. Repair all. Might as well make sure everything's repaired. <laughs>
I don't like that here. Even though it showed space and everything, I don't like it. Why did I put it in there? Uh, just that's a complete set. Now, she just said that she would meet us outside. Outside her chambers would have been, like, outside, like, when we appeared next to Bartholomew. But instead, she meets me by a quicksand. Perhaps you, you remember Lyria, the merchant daughter? Merchant's daughter? This is my persona, I assume, when I venture beyond the palace walls to observe my subjects on notice. Ordinarily, Papa Sean would accompany me, but this particular outing, I need an advisor, not a minder. And that is why I requested your company. Over the course of your many adventures, you have met people from all walks of life in every corner of Eosia, and would make use of your worldly experience. Now, let us be on our way. Our first destination is Stone's Throw, just beyond the Gate of Nald. <laughs> Upon this procession of tattered tents, its refugee camps is in squalor at the mercy of the elements and Thanalan's predators both. The city's mighty walls offer to safety, but the streets overflow with people as it is, and are less blessed by the hand of Nolan himself, no refugee could ever hope to afford a dwelling in Ulodar. Twenty years has passed since the fall of Alamigo, and five since the Calamity, yet the plight of the poor have grown more desperate, not less. As Sultana, the blame falls upon me. Hey, your hands are tied, Your Grace. Yes, my authority is limited, and that is an obstacle I must work to overcome. Can we press on and follow the road to the unholy air? <laughs> or if we were to fall as the Eddie Izzard's uh, advice, eh, because it has a fucking H in it. One of my favorite joke lines. To be fair, it's true. <laughs> Turned on the volume. I forgot to do that. I'm sorry about that. Oh. It was here in this unholy, unremarkable place that my father and mother met their doom. I was but a child at the time. My parents were returning from inspection of our interests in eastern Thanalin, when an untimely rock slide crushed their carriage. To this day, I'm not certain if the incident was simply misfortune or an expertly planned assassination. <laughs> Rabon once offered to reopen the investigation and bring the truth he assumed I must surely crave, but I refused. Even if my parents' death was orchestrated by the monitors, we could only have brought the the hirelings just the true villains, those who plotted to put me on the throne as a biddable puppet, were ever beyond our reach. Thus did I plan to strip the merchants of their power and place our nation in the hands of its citizens, and was quite unaware of the consequences my actions would have you have of you and yours. I shudder to think how many goodly souls paid the price of my naivete. Naivety. But I am no longer a child, reciting words of witness obedience, and I will not be used as a pawn by the monitorous damnable games. Ah, <sighs> forgive my, me my outburst. You are one of the few people to whom I feel I can speak my mind. Come, let us return to Uldar and visit the Colosseum.
I like how some uh, of the gear pieces end up like giving you tattoos instead of like actual like clothes. Gonna go to Gladiators Guild because that's where the Colosseum is. From the moment I became Sultana, I found myself thrust into an endless parade of document signing and ceremonies. For years, I simply signed where I was told to sign and sat where I was told to sit, blissfully oblivious to what, what any of it meant. Yet, one good thing did come from the ignominious chapter of my life, where it was during an official visit to the Colosseum that I first met Raubon. The match I had been invited to attend was not at all what I expected. They had pitted the bull of El Amigo against some dozen or so gladiators. Bickering though I... Flickered though I was, I would not stand for so obvious an injustice, and demanded to see a fair fight, one man against another. And my royal wish was duly granted. It was not until later that I learned of the gambling ring which I had arranged for Raubon to die in the sands that day. Regardless, my intervention meant that Raubon had but a single opponent to dispatch, which he duly did, and when he, he knelt before me to receive the winner's purse, he saw he would one day offer me his blade in service. Surrounded as I was by lies and manipulators, I confess I did dismiss it as a pleasant pl piece of theatre. But as you know, Raban is a man of his word. Though it took him another five years of fighting in the blood sands, he amassed a fortune so great as to buy not only his freedom, but a seat on the syndicate. And then I had my blade. I think this is the end. to serve with every fiber of my being from this day till my last. Long live the Sultana, and long live Ulda! Very long, but emotional. So, quick check here. Uh, high check. Yep. It's not by much. And maybe the hat is is an indication. But based off of, like, the height of the eyes, 
She is definitely an eye taller. <laughs> That's a description. An eye taller instead of a head taller. Anyways, that's the point. I tried to make him as small as possible. He is when small. Words cannot ex well express what that man means to me. There are others who care deeply for my well-being, of course. Papa Sean's love for me is that of a grandsire for the grandchild. But upon matters of governance, I cannot turn to bodyguards and maidservants for counsel. Raubon, with the authority of the syndicate position, was the first sword I could yield. He was the only edge which would break the strings that bound me. Oh, that's spell. Spell speed, spell speed, spell speed. Ah, I might need that some point in time. Okay. We must make haste. My absence will not go unnoticed by the Sultan's Sword for long, but there are other places I would visit. To the Arzanath Osiri. Sorry. Osiri. I don't know the word. So I'm just making up as I go along. I could probably Google. Google. Here. It's havoc. For sure. Let me turn up the volume just a little bit so you can 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 hear this. It's a container or room in which the bones of dead people are placed. Ossuary. 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 Here we go. You have learned with me what Ossuary. how Ossuary. is pronounced. It's pronounced. Ossuary. Yeah, there we go. Who is your friend? It also, they also have a hey guys on you, so you stuck at go, otherwise. <laughs> stuck at go is like, we're not going to track anything. We're just going to give you results. Where is the ossuary? Uh, it's right over here. It's, it's where the uh, Thaumaturgist Guild is. When the Calamity threatened, Raubon led the Alliance forces into battle on the plains of Cartineau, and I remained here. I prayed with all my heart that Archon Louis Roy would have the power to rouse the Twelve. Since that day, I have made a custom of visiting the shrine during each of my little excursions. Here I seek the blessing of Thal, reflect upon, upon my choices, and ask myself if I am fulfilling the, my duties as Sultana. They are really, they are rightly celebrated as, you are rightly celebrated as a champion because you have led the line in a hundred battles for the good of Eorzea. In each, in much the same way, I believe the measure of a monarch lies in how she leads her people in times of adversity. If I am to be a sultana worthy of the name, I cannot turn a blind eye to the troubles facing Ildar. I have chosen my path as a ghost. With Alamigo now freed from Imperial chains, I finally see a way to avoid aid the refugees. Already, many displaced Alamigans seek to begin the long trek home. To facilitate this process, I have made a small contribution, uh, contribution an artisan school in Walgar's Reach for any who wish to learn new trades. Realistically, however, it will take years for such training to yield tangible benefits. But we do not have years. These people will need shelter and employment if we are to survive, and this time the Old Dawn Treasury shall provide. Precisely where and how to allocate the necessary funds is, of course, another question.
Let me ask the advice of one who employs refugees. Wise suggestion. May up a visit to the Golden S Gold Saucer is in order. Its proprietor is a member of the syndicate, and he is one of the few who pay refugees a fair wage. I wonder, are you acquainted with Gobert Mandeville? Never met him. Why have I never met Godbert Manderville? Mainly because I have not done the Hildebrand quests. On this character. Well, he is a most generous man. If something of, if something of an eccentric, let us make our way to the, the landing and I will see that that word is sent to the gold saucer. Godbert should be only too glad to receive us. The gold saucer. I have ridden aboard a public airship before, but this will be my first visit to the gold saucer. I must confess to some excitement. Uh, I already have the ace, alright, so enjoy your trip. No. Canonically speaking, I would assume I would have accompanied her on the trip. We'd probably just like sit and talk during the trip. He is front, right? The entrance to card squares. And hold on. I don't. I have a description of its splendor, yet I never dreamed it'd be so bright and inviting. No, no, I couldn't possibly. We, we did not come here to fiddle away the royal coin. Godbook will be expecting us. Come, let us head directly to the lounge and ignore these gaudy temptations. I believe this is where, where we are to meet Lord Mandeville. Shall we sit where we, while we await his coming? Sit, have some more small talk. My apologies, Your Grace. I have kept you waiting. No apologies are necessary, God, but my request was sudden. You are kind to make yourself available at such an order. When the Sultana herself comes, comes when the Sultana herself comes calling, there is no more important engagement. As to the purpose of my visit, I would have your thoughts on how the Crown might best aid the refugees residing in Thanalan. I am you are aware, I am sure, that many of the Alamigo of Alamigos displaced sons and daughters long to return to their newly liberated homeland. And you are also aware of how they will suffer, suffer without shelter and work to sustain them. I would use our nation's wealth to spare them that suffering. What advice would you have for me on the matter of how it would be best to be distributed? The unusual you know, the circumstances of our meeting and your grace's choice of companion would suggest to me a desire of an honest and unvarnished opinion. I shall give you one. My advice is stop. Taxing old does wealth to save other meat and refugees is a terrible, terrible idea. You oppose my proposition? Most emphatically. I agree with your grace that the refugees must have housing and employment, but what profit is there in old da in these arrangements? Profit? After all you've done for, for Gearbon and his displacement, I thought you the very last person to seek to benefit from their misfortune. Forgive me, Your Grace, but you appear to be laboring under misapprehension. 
It is a fine endeavor to support one's fellow man. I f man, I fear, however, that your stance in, in one born of, of pity, your intent is to save the refugees, is it not? For all of our potential, we are indolent, indolent creatures by nature. If unconditional charity is all, you, all we know, then we begin to rely upon it, to expect it. And then we must consider Uldar's own poor, poor and downtrodden. Should they hear, hear of you spending the nation's coin not to improve their lot, but to nurture the distant citizens of Alamigo, it is unlikely they will applaud your generosity. Surely it is not your grace's intention to foster su such in such resentments, but to spread goodwill. Indeed, then any support I pledge to the refugees would promote self sufficiency must promote self-sufficiency, uh, whilst also serving the interests of the people of Uldar. Exactly so. Such an arrangement will create a far more equitable relationship with the returning Alamigans, even if it generates the revenue required to, even if it generates the revenue required to win the approval of your subjects. You have given me much to ponder, Lord Mandeville. I thank you for your candor. Godbert wasn't speaking out of malice during it. He is giving authentic advice, being like, look, idea is great, but there's other things that you need to consider that you may not be considering. That's basically what he's doing. He's He's giving advice for the good of all, of the Sultana. Oh. Okay. Why am I having trouble clicking on no, no, no. Oh, lag. Got it. It's one of those weird lags. Leggy leg leg. Prophet, that never even crossed my mind. But standing, uh, standing about lamenting my naivety, he will not be, do anyone any good. I shall consider my lesson learned and press on. Essigos, are you perchance acquainted with any successful merchants? If you attempt, if my attempt at philanthropy is, is obligated to reap a profit, it would be wise to consult someone with a knack for business. Um, well, I have worked with the East Aldern Art Training Company. Hmm. Ordinarily, I would not trust any agent of the East Aldern Art Training Company. But if you hold this Hancock fellow in high esteem, I would content to lend, be led by you. I may repay my faith by journeying to distant Kugane and speaking with him. You may repay my faith by journeying to distant Kugane and speaking with him on my behalf. Eager though I am to visit those shores, I have not the leisure for a lengthy sea voyage. Now, assuming you will travel as you will travel as adventurers I want to do, I will await your report at the eighth ride to Noldar. A fair journey journey to you, Essegos, and a swift one, if you please. Can you see where this is going? Do you think Hancock will go visit the Sultana to give her advice or just give me advice? Because when you think about it, Hancock is actually a minion. Want to quote?
As a ghost, to what do I owe the pleasure? Or are you here on business? Yeah, uh, the Sultana wants to talk to you about the thing. Beg your pardon? Your grace, the Sultana will have my opinion on how best to invest the wealth of an old da? My dear Esagos, I, I have you to thank for this recognition, I am sure. But I am flattered, and I'm flattered that you came to me. Truly flattered. But why settle for a lonely, lowly apprentice when you could have the master? Upon matters of profit, there is no living soul better qualified to advise her grace than Chairman Lodorito, a man whose morning excursions are said to fill his his god robe. A R D R D E Garderobe. Turn up the line for, for a second here. Guard robe. Oh, it's just guard robe. Okay. I think I might do that more <laughs> to find pronunciations of words that I'm not familiar with. I should be happy to arrange a meeting for you, say, at the Science former headquarters in Thanalan. The Waking Sands seem a suitably neutral venue for negotiations, don't you think? Very well, as it goes, and may your dealings prove fruitful. Back to Ulda. My favorite location, so it's cheaper. Welcome back, Asagos. Did your merchant friend have any useful advice to share? Yeah, don't talk to him. Talk to Lolorito. With Lolorito? And you agreed to this? I am well aware of his standing in the field of business, but I'd hope to keep the monstrous at arm's length and him in particular. Nay, I cannot live in fear of the man. I must learn how to treat with him if I am to rule Darth effectively. Very well. I will meet with Lolorito. Let us go ahead to the Waking Sands and prepare for his coming. Did it teleport me or do I need to go there myself? I can't remember. Oh, we are teleported. Yay. So this is the science first where the science first congregated. I've heard many tales, but never had had occasion to visit. The work then, the hour of the meeting drawn near, and I would gather my thoughts. Pray see to it that we have the appointed room to ourselves. This is definitely the end. A personal summons from the Scions. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. <laughs> Not a most cheeky. Don't you think? You have made your point. It is indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. There, would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I am glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lollorito. But shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. 
I must say, I am most eager to hear your proposal. Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lolorito, share with us your mercantile wisdom. Ah, <laughs> twould seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. So she kind of explains everything. Exposition. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that a proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Uldar. Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. Tis an elegant solution. Albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identified the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. Your travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Abania, and you know the land far better than I. Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? Uh, well, I suppose, like, well, Alagana is kind of still there. Uh, Alighieri... Well, Alighieri seems to already been, like, set up and thing. There is this, like, little, like, salter... the saltery? that desolate little village on the shore of Loch Seld. I know the Saltry and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, myself included. Salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. And in this instance, I dare say, it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of gill. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course, but I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Naturally, Your Grace. I shall dispatch representatives well-versed in the extraction of this white gold and wring every last ons of profit from its production. The Loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment, whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders. Just as your grace desired. A deal is struck then. Look, Lord Lorito is a skeeving sky. He's a bastard. Um, but if it's business and he, he knows business, this is one of the reasons why he's the richest man in Ulda. <sighs> I fear it will be many years before I feel comfortable taking part in such negotiations. But I shall not complain. We, we have piqued Lord Lorito's interest and secured his invaluable expertise. Thank you, Eskos. I could not have done it without you. Uh. 
feel crit mainly because it uh, generates uh, chakra. And I was ready to move ahead with their plans. Of uh, course, it's decided. I shall return to the palace and have my ministers begin work on implementing the particulars of the plan. If I could pre prevail upon you one more time, Eskers, I would ask that you convey the details of our negotiations to Commander Hext as on your return to El Amigo. My thanks again. Together we have laid the groundwork for an endeavor which promises to benefit the people of that peoples of El Amigo and El Darbos. Off to Girbanya. Um Yeah. I'm gonna teleport to Girabanya. We're at uh two hours and twenty five minutes. This is probably a good time to to take a break, a good little stopping point. Uh I'll come back in about uh, it's not gonna be long, it's just gonna be a few minutes. Um it's gonna be one of those take down. Well, I'm kinda rested already, so I'm gonna this is probably gonna be really quick. I'm gonna take it down, I'm gonna put it back up. Stay tuned. Uh but this is this is all for breaking up the the videos that go to YouTube. <laughs> that's that's really all it is. Which reminds me, I need to do some management of that. I think I haven't transferred stuff there in a while.